a framework to operate within. And uh, hopefully we'll get to Q&A and through the course of the presentation, we'll stop if there are any specific questions which come through in the chat. Okay, so let's get to it. So, um, so why are we having this discussion today and why is Lean Digital gaining traction as an essential framework to consider when moving to new digital ways of working? Well, it's often helpful to ground our conversation today with some of the digital trends and drivers across industries uh, today. So I've, I've shared some statistics here, which are from well-known sources such as Gartner, IDC, McKinsey. Um, I'll pick a few. 89% of companies have either adopted a digital first business approach or are planning to do so. Uh, we've seen a 20 to 25% increase in customer satisfaction uh, that can be achieved through lean digital transformation. 56% of CEOs say digital improvements have led to increased revenue. And um, 45% of companies don't believe the company has the right technology to implement a digital transformation. And 69% of consumers say a disconnected customer experience would make them consider changing service providers. And surprisingly, maybe not, 70% of digital transformations fail. Not completely, but most often due to resistance from employees and lack of appropriate frameworks. So these statistics have been taken from a number of leading industry sources, as I say, IDC, McKinsey. Um, most organizations have been forced to re-examine digital strategies, especially because of the pandemic. And the projected value, if you think about, you know, the value of direct investment in digital transformation up to 2023 is estimated to be around 6.8 trillion US dollars. So this is clearly not a topic you could, can ignore today. Now, let me start with, I'll go to the next slide here. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the basic terminology which is used widely across industries when talking about digital investments. Most people um, tend to confuse digital transformation with digitization or digitalization. So I'm going to try and break down the meaning of these terms a little bit today. And the, these three elements are commonly referred to as the three Ds. So let's start with the first one, digitization. So this really dates back to the 1950s with the advent of computers and it really came to prominence in the 1990s with the arrival of the World Wide Web. Digitization is the process of converting information from analog form to digital form. So some you know, uh, examples of this may be scanning a physical photo and creating an electronic record, um, converting a paper report to a PDF file. Um, think of moving your, your diary to a fancy note, notebook such as OneNote. Now the benefits when you think about digitization, it really enables the efficient and effective storage of information which takes up less space. And if you think about it, and you think about how it's changed the way we work, how we shop, how we bank, how we manage our health, um, how we travel, educate, and how we entertain ourselves. The pandemic has um, effectively accelerated the pace of digitization. And some companies were, were focused on this, you know, pre the pandemic through investments in collaboration technologies such as Zoom uh, and making them a little bit more resilient at the outset of the pandemic. Uh, digitization has moved probably from more of a nice to have to a must have for most organizations. Now let's look at the second component, the second D, which is known as digitalization. Digitalization moves uh, beyond digitization, and really what it's doing is leveraging digital technology to entirely transform your business process. And so that's really evaluating, re-engineering, and reimagining the way you do business today. Typically, you are concerned about you know, streamlining processes, simplifying operations, driving efficiencies, and taking cost out. Um, and, and think of it as yet another step towards a digital business model. So, you know, some examples of this may be, you know, uh, analyzing data collected through connected or wearable devices to diagnose medical conditions uh, and allow preemptive uh, medical actions. Um, in education, it can refer to the use of digital tools to teach students um, in a hybrid or virtual teaching model. And then as we move forward into the realm of digital transformation, 
this really refers to the way business is done. And, um, you know, in, in essence, it involves creating, in some cases, entirely new businesses. Um, if you think digital transformation makes companies reevaluate and improve on their current standard operating protocols for areas such as internal systems and customer interactions. Um, in contrast, digitalization, the previous one, simply means applying technology to run an existing business, whereas digital transformation really means developing new businesses in a digital way. Now, some real world examples include AI powered chatbots that simple, uh, answer simple customer queries. Um, Nike is a great example. It's, um, as most people know, is a giant in the sports footwear industry, has created a mobile application that allows you to choose the best type of shoe based on leg scan. And they scan the feet and the application um, then creates a map of them based on, I think, about 13 different data points. And there are other examples in the areas of digital payments and even in education, moving the curriculum online. So, you know, digital transformation is really a, you know, it's a series of culture, workforce, business, and technology shifts, which can enable new operating models and can help transform your operations, your strategic directions, and, and your overall value proposition in some cases.